Hello again, Ian Stimpy with Mastermind Games, back for more Malifo, this time a guild watcher. So a watcher is a scout construct with its eye lens attuned magically to a separate one carried by its support team, which allows said team to see what it sees, making it invaluable for scouting and reconnaissance. <clears throat> leather, or oiled leather, 09110. Very lightweight chassis. Developed, no, based on older construct and improved by Hoffman to its current form. Watcher is incredibly fuel efficient and very lightweight. Doesn't really have much in the way of offense, but it's also kind of a support unit. So, and it can be taken by any guild member. Means anyone can benefit. I think. Uh, your Ortega family, Perdita and her crew, could gain the most from an outside of Hawkins' crew, but I am basing that off of second edition rules, as I still don't have any third edition yet. Not outside the Dead Man's Hand Pack, anyway, which was more blind luck than anything else that I found. And while this is mounted on... Okay, yeah, that's making me nervous. There's only one contact point, so I'm going to have to be careful and use a very delicate touch. Okay. So, I completely lost my train of thought. Right. Oh, well. Getting a nice solid coat on the wings. And the watcher is not unique, but I would say there's only really cause to pull no more than. Ah, getting horribly tongue tied, huh? I'd say no more than one would be necessary for any size army. But. The second edition fiction does mention now uh, multiple construction materials, including wood and leather, canvas, and definitely has a bat like appearance. This is going to be another really simple color scheme, so I'm going to let that dry before moving on, but that's the start of it. All right. Next, Black and Steel, 09205. So my train of thought came back to me. Despite being mounted on a 30 millimeter base, this has a very massive wingspan that extends well beyond the, the uh, base itself. Now with this, I'm going to carefully pick out the... Well, that has got too much water in it. Carefully pick out the wing struts. It's including the tips that are the outside, visible from the outside here. Just being real careful here now. Something on assembly is this part of the arm does not actually attach to the wing. It sure looks like it should. But it does not. Just something to keep in mind during assembly. Because that threw me off quite a bit. It's carefully tracing along. Keeping my brush moist but not overly wet. Big ol' head. It's a big ol' eye. 
Uh, the better to see it with to quote the big bad wolf. And while this watcher is clearly human sized, it's almost implied in the fiction that it's supposed to be smaller. And then again, a lot of games aren't necessarily in what I would call true scale with each other. Some games have more dispar disparity than others with this, but yeah. Do this piece here, but I might want to pick it out in another color later. I'm not sure if I want to use bronze on this one yet or not, but I have until this is dried to decide. Can try to get a nice solid coat, and that's pretty good. Let that dry, continue on with it. So far, so good. All right, I think I am gonna hold off on putting any bronze on this model this time around, so uniform gray to finish up the base coats. I'll do some lighting effects in here too, so. I just think it's fine without having a, another color. But again, it all boils down to personal taste, so paint this thing however you feel like. I'm just kind of showing a way it could be painted. Being real careful around the foot that touches the base as well as that wing that comes close. This is again a hand sculpting thing I do. Alright, see so that's got it, so let that dry, then I can start shading. Well, it doesn't like focusing on this, but first shade, adamantium black 09124. And I think my oiled leather's about cash, but I have a spare on hand. Uh, thinning the paint out with one part water to one part paint. Darker colors like this, you might want to do a little more water, two to three parts in some cases. Let's start with the most irritating areas first. and. Get these struts, I know you couldn't see that one too well. But unfortunately, my hand has to go somewhere. So, switching from metal to plastic has, and re well, to plastic and resin has been kind of an industry shift for a while. As for the longest time, this hobby was dominated by metal models, especially a tin alloy, pewter alloy. But as the price of those materials has gone up so much, this is just a natural choice to try to keep costs down. My own products I make with resin. I wouldn't mind switching to plastic just to lower the costs and thus the price point. But that aside, there are some issues with plastic depending on the kind used. Malifaux uses a very brittle plastic. Allows for great detail, but the trade-off is fragility. Another shift is going away from hand sculpting to designing in a CAD and doing 3D printed prototypes. Okay, that's got that. Once it dries, I can get the leather in the base and go from there.
All right. That black is still drying, but I can move on to the next one anyway. Ruddy leather, 091. Excuse me, 09109. Your drying time is going to be affected by the temperature and humidity. Lower temperature means a longer drying time. Higher humidity means a longer drying time. Right now, it's reasonably... It's a little chilly and fairly humid. So, the drying time... Lately, I've enjoyed low humidity and high temperatures which have resulted in slow in uh, faster drying times. But today, things are cooler and more humid, so my drying times are going to be a little longer now. And that's one part I cut out of these videos because even I don't like watching paint dry. <laughs> so being careful with the, around the times here. But I do want a solid coat, especially on the interior. Well, I'm probably not going to highlight the inside of the wings, at least not on the... Well, maybe a bit. I don't know. We'll see what I feel like when I get to that step, but... Something like this might look better if I don't highlight the interior of the wings. don't know how well you can see that. Again, my rig is set up so my camera's behind me and there's nothing I can do about that right this minute. It's just based on the amount of space I have in my home, which is not too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Outside of that lung full of smoke from the other day with those neighbors, the uh, my allergies are trying to make one last push before autumn. Okay, so being careful around this uh, pack here. It does mention that they're supposed to be powered by a soul stone powered steam generator steam engine so this might be a uh, smokestacks on the back to vent uh, the, the smoke as well as the steam but again we're talking about fantasy industrial revolution engineering so the laws of physics as we understand them physics, thermodynamics, etc. don't necessarily apply. <clears throat> and now, matte white. This might get a little tricky, but we'll get the lenses. And that's dripping paint on. I mean, that's fine to happen. So this is going to be done as a base coat, essentially. But... Big eye here, basically flying security camera, and then one in the chest here, basing that off what the art in the book shows, which is not a bad idea to give it electric color. It seems some of the black is either not completely dry or that some of the brown has leaked into this, so that makes it interesting. <laughs> I'll muddy it a little bit, but it should be okay when I highlight. And now I'm going to try to soak this up with the brush. It's not working, so no reason to keep the paper towel handy. I want to soak that up as best I can because Stormy Gray 09088, I also want to do the base right now as well. As I'll wrap up the highlights, I'll still earth shading, sorry. I'll still have lighting effects to do before I can highlight, but let's get it on the right track. Again, half paint, half water to thin it into a wash. And just let it flow. 
try to see that it gets into these recessed areas. And I think I can take a gamble and try the lighting effect. So blood red, 09003. Though this is a calculated risk, so <clears throat> you want to thin out for lighting effects two to three parts water to one part paint. You want it a little on the thin side. One of the keys is to see that some of the light shows through. And that doesn't look too bad on the eye, but the chest is kind of all right. I'm just going to absorb that. Try to touch that up and just redo that chest off camera so you don't have to suffer through another clip. So, back in a bit. All right, time to highlight. I'm going to turn my volume down a bit. Okay. All right. A little glitch, I think we're fixed. Getting tongue tied again, oh boy. So, starting with plate mail metal, using a dry brushing technique. And I have touched up all the lighting. May have gone a bit too far on the uh, eye, though. So, no water, straight paint, ragged feathered brush. Rub most of the paint out on the paper towel. It looks like there's nothing left. And then, let me dust the area to be affected. And I'm focusing on the most readily visible areas. So I'm not going to worry about the underside of that arm. Um, hmm. I'm going to take caution on the head so as not to get the lens. Then, after cleaning my brush out thoroughly, burnt orange is 09111. This is such a difficult angle to work with here. It's just because of the way it's physically configured. So we'll go ahead and do a bit of the inside here. Maybe just like that is good. That is excessive there. Didn't quite get all the paint out I needed to. going against the raised areas, which makes those creases pop all the more. Then, Misty Gray, 09090. Again, a fairly simple color scheme. And now I'm switching to a flathead brush, taking matte black.
like this, there are no reshoots. Now, without stripping paint for months on end, I'm just lining the base, going up to, but trying not to go onto the the um, sculpted basing I put in there, and I just blew that to get a nice finish and cover up the errant bits of paint. And this can be any color. I used to do faction specific before the third edition announced faction changes. And at that point it just seemed kind of pointless because if they change if models change factions once, they could do so again at a later time in a later edition. So Kind of, uh, yeah, silly in that regard. The flatheads are better for wide areas like this. And since I only plan on getting one of these, there's no sense in numbering the back, so that's it. The Watcher went flying from the guild. Continuing this uh, box set. And until next time, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.